Praise the Lord. Please let's rise up as we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for giving us the privilege to be in your presence together as one nation. Accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that as we reason in your word, we look at the Bible, we look at the word of truth, the word of life. The Holy Spirit will breathe to everyone in Jesus' name. And Lord, you will impact us for your own glory. We thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's be seated. God bless you. We thank God for how far we have come. Uh, the Lord has ministered to us already. And I pray that what God has planted in you, it will continue to live, to thrive, to multiply in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we are going to conclude by looking at the message, the graceful life of spirit-filled people. When God fills you with his spirit, there is a life that he expects. And that life will be your own portion in Jesus' name. Um, we have read from Ephesians chapter 5 in our Bible reading. When you look at the book of Ephesians, if you have studied it very well, it's divided into two parts. Uh, there is the first part, uh, chapters 1, 2, and 3. Uh, which is laying the foundation of the Christian faith. In fact, it's almost like a mini Bible, a mini gospel. And then from chapters 4, 5, and 6, uh, it's talking to us about the practical life of the believer. Now let's look at chapter 1 and verse 3, for example. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Now it is, the, the, the whole of, I uh, mean, when you look at chapter 1, it, it's talking to us about our possession in Christ, what God has given unto us. Uh, when you come to chapter 2, it's talking about our position in Christ, where we are as believers. And when you get to chapter 3, it's talking about our power or our right in Christ. It's so beautiful a book. Chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. When God blesses you, you have possession. We jump to chapter 11, verse 11 of the same book, uh, chapter 1 and verse 11. It says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things, after the counsel of his own will, verse 12, that we should be unto the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, verse 13, in whom ye also trusted, after ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, verse 14, which is the earnest, that is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So it's talking to us here about our possession in Jesus Christ, that God has deposited something in you, the promise of eternal life. When you move to chapter 2, talking about our position where we are, chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, And you hath he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins. He has made you alive. You are dead in trespasses. You are dead in sins. But now he has quickened you. In verse 4, the Bible is talking to us about God, who is rich in mercy. For his great love we are with, he loved us. Even when we were, yeah, we were dead in sins, what has he done? He has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, he has saved. And look at the following verse. What, 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 what does God say here? He has raised us up. Now, I was talk, talking about where? About our position. Where he has raised us. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. He's talking to us here. He's, he has lifted us up. You are lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. When you get to verses 19 to 22, he's talking to us still about our position. He says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. And look at verse 22. This is beautiful. In whom ye also, let's read it together. I want to go. And when you see ye, just turn it to we. Amen? Amen. Let's read it again, please. In whom we also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. You begin to see that what we are talking about, about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, about the infinity of the Holy Ghost, is not standing just aloof. It is the plan of God. In fact, the moment you are born again, you become the habitation of God. That means the house of God. So if somebody is saying, where is the house of God? Where is the permanent home address of God? It's you, an habitation of God. How does God live in us? From that verse of scripture? How does God live in us? Through the Spirit, where you live, that is where you are, we are called, I mean, it's called your habitation. If somebody is saying, where is your domicile or where is your residence, it's where you live. Where is the residence of God? Where is God's domicile? It is you, because you are the temple of God, and God dwells in you by His Spirit. That is the position that God has given unto you, has brought you into, and you are not going out of that position in Jesus' name. Now, looking at chapter, th uh, chapter 3, he's now talking about our power or our right. Look at chapter 3 and verse 6. The Bible tells us there that the Gentiles, that we, outside the Jewish nations, should be fellow hearers of, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Praise the Lord. In seven, it says, let's read it together. I want to go. What is doing, what is working there in us? Effectual what? Power, the power of God. Eh? And that power of God working in you gives you rights. Ah, so I would say you have power, you have rights in the kingdom of God. Look at verse 10. The Bible says, To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness. And what? Access, that is right, with confidence by faith, by the faith of him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you, you begin to see here that when you read the Bible very well, the thing that we have been looking at since the beginning of this quarter, they are just part of the gospel. They are just part of the benefits of the gospel given unto us. In fact, it's part of our salvation. When you talk about being born again, that's part of the salvation package. You talk about sanctification, it's part of the salvation package. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is part of the salvation package because that salvation doesn't end here. Because the Bible is talking about the Holy Ghost that is the earnest, that is the seal of the purchased possession. Because when you get to heaven, you are going to get the final salvation. That's why Jesus Christ says, He that endures to the end, what is going to happen to him, the sin shall be saved. And before you get there, there is a seal. It's just like you have put wine in the bottle, and you don't want that wine to spill. You cork it. You seal it. The same thing. God puts his power in you, his righteousness in you, and then he seals you with the Holy Ghost. That is one. But not only that, you make a down payment, maybe, uh, you know, you want to buy a house, and then you say, pay 10%, put it in the bank, so that we know that the contract is sealed, and on the day of, um, of uh, possession, you are going to get the house. Exactly the same thing. The Holy Spirit given to us is a down payment. So when we get there in heaven, we'll be able to get the house 
that has been prepared for us, the full benefit. That is the gospel. Now that is chapters 1, 2, and 3. Now he has laid the foundation and in chapters 4, 5, and 6, he's now talking to us about practical Christianity. He's telling us about, you know, the, the church, uh, our position in the church, uh, the way we should behave in the church, the gifts that God has given us in the church. He's talking about our conduct. He's talking about our family. He's talking about our work. He's talking about spiritual warfare, the things that we need to know. And that's why, you know, the preacher in the sermon, uh, in, the, in the seminar told us that, you see, in the Pentecostal uh, uh, circle, sometimes we forget the foundation and then we dwell on the top. And if you do that, you are not going to last. No, the, the apostle first lays the foundation, chapters 1, 2, 3, so that when you begin to see the manifestation of the spiritual warfare and everything, you will not forget that it's coming from the root. Uh, it is the root that bears you. And when you, when, you, when you balance it up like that, you will be able to last, and our church will last in Jesus' name. And that's why every time it's important for us to remind ourselves of the things that we have heard, the things that we have learned. And God is uh, you know, reviewing the foundation with you again and telling you this, where you are coming from. You have been Gentiles. Now you have become a child of God. You have received the Spirit of God. Remember that you are not bearing the root, but the root is bearing you. And that's why you should be careful. Stay within that root so that you are not removed from the base. You are not removed from the, the root. And then you are going to stand. And there is nothing to fear at all. You are not going to fall. You are not going to faint. The Lord is going to keep you and your spiritual life will stand intact in Jesus' name. Now, uh, somewhere in the middle of the second part, which is chapters 4, 5, and 6, that's what we are talking about today. Do you see where it is now? Amen. Are we together? Amen. Don't sleep. Mm -hmm. Because it is time to be awake. If there is somebody sleeping beside you, you are going to say, Auntie or uncle or bro or something, uh, keep away because something is coming. Tell yourself something is coming. Something. And the Lord is going to touch you uh, graciously in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, having laid this practical foundation, we now see in verse 18 of chapter 5. And he's telling us something there. Can we read it together, brethren? Imagine after he has done all these uh, theological things, uh, you know, uh, and then he now said, Brethren, don't be drunk with wine. We are in his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And people will say, Well, this is not, you understand? It's not charismatic. But it's still part of it. He's saying, Be filled with the Spirit. But what is going to happen after we have been filled with the Spirit? That's what we are talking about today. There is a kind of life that is expected when people are filled with the Spirit. And if you want to understand that, that kind of life, you just look at the Bible. Amen? Amen. Because sometimes we forget that the experience that we have, they are from the Bible. And when we begin to manifest the experiences, you now begin to say, hey, everybody forget the Bible. We are not going to forget the Bible because that's the basis. That's where we got the experience from. If there is any experience you are getting and it is extra biblical, that is outside the Bible, it is fake, it is false. Because to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this truth, it is because there is no light in them. There is never any other light that is coming but the light of the scripture. And that's why the Bible is a living book. We continue to understand it, to know it, and it is thereby our lives are formed. And through this, we are going to walk safely on the Pentecostal highway. Amen. Amen. Because we are, the guardrails are there, the, the, the signs are there, we, we will get to the destination. There is nothing for us to fear at all because we are walking on the king's highway. And then you will be bold as a lion because you know what you are believed. Remember, Saul did not backslide. Amen? Peter didn't backslide. Even if you begin to go wrong and you fear God, God is going to tell you you are going wrong. And then you look at the Bible and they will say, you know, sometimes you are talking, maybe you are driving on the highway and then you are talking with your wife or with your husband. And by the time you know it, you are getting to the guardrails. You know, in some countries, they even put something on the road so that by the time you are getting to the, to the, to the, to the in Belgium, for example, 
If you are going outside the highway, what happens to the tire and the road? It begins to make a kind of noise. In fact, nowadays it's even easier. Uh, you have these cars, uh, which some of you have. You understand? You know these elegant cars? Uh, maybe we should begin to buy some of those uh, um, uh, cars for our secretaries in the church as well, so that they will understand the illustration. Amen? So, and then when you, go, you put that thing on, you are driving, and by the time you begin to move, it begins to... What's happening? Oh, yeah, he said you are going off the road. There's, the Holy Ghost is like that. Looking through, you know, as you are reading the Bible, the Holy Ghost will be telling you, you are, you are going off-road. You are going off-road now. We will not miss the road in Jesus' name. Yeah. Tell yourself, I'm not going to miss the way. Because if you want to be kept, you will be kept. The Bible says we are kept by the power of God. There are many doctrines flying all over the place. I am kept by the power of God. What about you? And God is going to keep you in Jesus' name. There are three points before we pray. Number one, saturated with the Spirit. Tell yourself, saturated with the Spirit. And that's what we see in verse 18. It says, don't be drunk with wine. We are in this excess. You know, there is literal wine. Uh, uh, the Nazarite doesn't even drink it. Not to talk about being drunk with it. You know, there are some believers, uh, and they begin to argue. Does God say we should not drink or we should not get drunk? Well, Jesus Christ was called a Nazarite. Uh, the people, if they, if, if, when you look at Amos chapter 2, for example, you know, talking to the people, why do you give the Nazarite wine to drink? Let them be arguing what they are arguing. I don't argue about whether we should drink wine or we shouldn't drink, get drunk or whatever. There is something, the emphasis the Holy Ghost is making here is that that one leads to excess. Be drunk with the Holy Spirit. That's the emphasis. Be drunk with what? With the Holy Spirit. He's just making a comparison. He said, don't, 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 be, don't, don't be filled with the excesses of this life. Don't be drunk with wine. There is literal wine. But there is also the figurative uh, wine. There is also the kind of, of wine of pleasure. Uh, the kind of wine of, uh, wine of power, of passion, of pride, of position. That you are so drunk with that thing, of the privileges that you have in life. You are so drunk. So I said, don't, don't, don't get messed up with that. They filled with the Holy Ghost. The more filled you are with the Holy Ghost, the less all these earthly things uh, have value to you. Because there are people, you know, you are, the reason why some people are not filled with the Holy Ghost is they are so occupied with the things of this life. And remember, you are a soldier. The Bible says that, you know, as a good soldier of Christ, you detach yourself from the encumbrance of this world, of this life, so that you'll be able to please him who has called you to be a soldier. Uh, let's look at Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25, you know, God is, is giving us where our emphasis should be. Proverbs chapter 25, we read from verse 16. Proverbs chapter 5, 25, verse 16. The Bible says, Has thou found honey? What should you do? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. What do we call that in, in, in Bible language? Moderation or temperance. You know, eat so much as is sufficient for thee. What is going to happen if you don't do that? Let thou be filled there with and vomited. That's what we call, the Bible calls excess. And you, you vomit the excess. The one that doesn't stay in the belly. So the Bible is saying, is there any pleasure in your life? You have just bought a house, you have just bought a car, or you have just married a wife? As much as is sufficient for you. Otherwise, you become filled. And something that could have been good for you becomes a problem. That's what the Bible is telling us. That's what will lead to excess. We don't do that as children of God. God wants us to be sober, to be vigilant. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We read from verse 6. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 6. When you are there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Let's read together. One, two, go. Amen. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Verse 7. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Verse uh, uh, 8. But let us who are of the day. What do we do? 
be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. This is what God is talking about. Don't be drunk with the things of this world. Be sober. Be sober. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 13. We open our Bibles there quickly, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Want to go? Wherefore, guard up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Chapter 4 of 1 Peter, the same book, we go to verse 7. Chapter 4, verse 7. One, two, go. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And finally, chapter 5 and verse 8. Chapter 5 and verse 8. Are we there, my brethren? Yes. Want to go? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, you begin to see that. It says, don't be drunk. They don't be overtaken. Don't be given to the things that excite people so much they forget the Bible. Instead of that, he now says, be filled with the Spirit. And thank God over the, the since um, July, August, and this month, September, and particularly also since we started our uh, impartation weekend, we have been hearing that and we have been praying about that. So be filled, be filled. Be filled, be filled until you are full. How do you know that a bottle is filled? Oh, until it's overflowing. Amen. You know, in some countries, it's uh, difficult. Uh, there are some rules. For example, that uh, maybe I was somewhere some years ago, uh, and they were not permitted to fuel at a particular hour. And we got there, we were traveling. And so they switched off the light and said, we are going to fill your car. How do you know that it's, 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 the thing is full? Well, there's no... And then the thing started, oh, okay, it's full now. Amen. He will fill you to overflowing. Amen. And we normally sing it, he will fill my cup today to overflowing as the Lord commanded me, bring your vessels, not a few. Is that what, what we sing? He will fill you to overflowing. When you are full and you are flowing over, then you know that you have received the Holy Spirit. Is it not what you read in also in Psalm 23? Is that not so? Yeah? My cup does what? It runs over. Your cup will run over in Jesus' name. And that's why you, 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 you pray in Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1 from verse 20. That, it's not something that uh, you are going to stop and you say, Oh, it was nice that he did this impartation week. No. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. It's, 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 it's something that should be continuous. And actually, it becomes a lifestyle. And it's wonderful when prayer becomes your lifestyle. It's not some, just something that you do. You know, you know, some people, they want to lose weight. And then, um, I, I'm not talking about anybody in particular, you understand? Uh, so that we don't get into trouble. I'm just using illustration. Everybody say illustration. And then they say they want to lose weight. They say, ah, no problem. What are you going to do? Well, uh, and then they give them rules. Don't uh, limit the carbohydrate. Limit this one. Then I say, wonderful, I'm going to do it. And then you do exercise every day, and you eat vegetables. And then for the first week, wow, 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 wow. Second week, wow, wow, wow. I say, this thing is nice. And I'm, I'm sorry. Say, sister, you have lost weight. Yes. What happened? In fact, I'm following this thing. How, how, I, I, was, I was 80 kilograms before. Now, within three months, I, I'm, I'm now 60. Don't you lose to see me? I look like sweet 16, and everyone says, praise the Lord. And two years after, you see them. And it's not only 80, it's 96. I'm saying, what happened? You see this thing now. <laughs> the, the road was tough because it wasn't a lifestyle. When it becomes your lifestyle, you just do it naturally. Uh, you, just go, you keep it or you enjoy doing it because you know the benefits of a healthy weight. You know the benefits of a healthy lifestyle in the choice of your food. And, so, and, then, and then maybe you now travel to a particular country that say, oh, sister has come from abroad. And then they bring all the... Uh, <laughs> 
you understand no? the, 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 the dodo, the everything, and then they put everything together and say, your auntie has come from there. Is this food for one day or for one year? And they will say, ah, I said, no, <laughs> put that one aside. And then, do you have salad? <laughs> a salad when you both people have come again. Now, it's just because it has become your lifestyle. The same thing, let's read it together. Jude chapter. Which verse, my brethren? Verse 20 and verse 21. Want to go? But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, doing what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. What are we going to do then in verse 21? Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. You are building yourself up on your most holy faith. Number two, serving through the Spirit. You now, when you are filled with the Spirit, it will be obvious in the things we do. We go back to our text. That is, which book? Ephesians. Ephesians. Which chapter, my brethren? Uh, chapter 5. Now we are going to read. We read verse 18 before, and after 18, what comes? 19. 19. Hallelujah. One, two, go. Hallelujah. This is wonderful. It says when we are filled with the Spirit, you know, after that verse 18, it doesn't put full stop. It says something happens. We speak to ourselves, to one another. You speak to yourself and you speak to other people. How do we speak, my brethren? In what? In Psalms. In hymns. And spiritual songs. Making what? <sighs> spiritual songs. You know, some people, they will argue. Ah, is it only, uh, Jesus only, is our message we'll be singing? What about the other one? The one we were singing before we were born again. No, no, spiritual songs. Sensual songs. And some people argue. Ah, pastor. Now that you are born again, is it only Bible songs we are going to be singing? What about the other songs, the nice, nice, nice other songs? But all the songs that you sing that they excite the body. Hmm. Okay. After all, we are husband and wife. Any time that uh, I sing this song, it turns me on as a husband or as a wife. That's what I need so that I can be able to be, I will be able to perform my conjugal duties. You have a problem. Which song did Adam and Eve sing <laughs> that turned them on? You know the problem? The people tell us that, you know, without that song, I, I, I can't be on. Well, you need prayer. <laughs> because something is wrong. And uh, they will say, well, uh, in fact, some people even go to the extent that they say, well, after all, we are husband and wife. We want to, I mean, it's just between the two of us to watch this pornography so that I will be turned on. You have a problem, a major problem. Because, listen, if you really want to be a Christian, you have to follow the Bible. If you want to be a believer, you look at the Word of God. Many of the things that we imbibe, they are the things that the devil is bringing upon people. And tell them, unless you do this, your, your marriage is not going to be on the moon. No, my marriage will be beyond the moon. Amen. Amen. What are we talking about? It says, singing to yourselves in hymns, in psalms, in spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart. Unto whom? You're not singing to the pastor. You're making melody unto the Lord. And then you get to the church sometimes and say, wow. And, you say, and nowadays, it's becoming uh, really, really heavy. You don't know the difference between disco and church. And then they put the bass. And then when you are in the church, sometimes your head is, is, is jingling. I say, oh, what is the problem? Are we, are we ministering unto the body? Or we are ministering? Does the Holy Ghost tell you that he needs all this bass? What is happening? It's a singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Whether you have Organ or you don't have organ. I love music. Ah, from like this. But then, 
Pentecostals make a melody unto the Lord. And we are going to have great music in Jesus' name. Amen. Now don't begin to say, well, thank God. All this tonic sulfur, let's relax. You are not going to relax. We want top-notch music. But we don't want... Hey, what is happening? Making melody in your hearts unto the Lord. That's what God is talking about. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. When the Holy Spirit fills you, he works through you. He gives you revelation. When you get to Luke chapter 1, uh, you, you will see something there. Luke chapter 1 from verse 41. Are we together, my brethren? Luke chapter 1. I don't know what is... Uh, is it spiritual song that is booming around me now? Or anytime I talk, something... <laughs> do, you, do, do you hear that? Uh, and some people will say maybe it is uh, spiritual power. I don't, I don't think that is the power we need. No, <laughs> we need. Amen. Amen. Verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth had the salutation of Mary, what happened? The babe leaped in her womb. Now, look at what happened. And Elizabeth, what happened to her? Was filled with the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine that? It's, it will begin to happen in our midst in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor comes to visit you in the house, and the moment pastor comes home, something just happens. You are just filled with the Holy Ghost. Wouldn't that be, 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 be wonderful? You, you enter church, you have been discouraged, you have been weary, and you just enter church, and maybe one of our sisters leading the opening prayer, and you enter church, something comes on, the Holy Ghost comes on you, and all the weariness just leaves, and you be, before you know it, you begin to pray, you begin to, something is happening, it will begin today. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. This is what happened. Just, they didn't go for Bible study. They didn't go for, just going for a visit. And then when she got there, the, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. But what happened after she was filled with the Holy Ghost? And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me. Just stop there. They, they never had discussion before this time. She did not even know that, um, that uh, Mary was pregnant. Because this, her own pregnancy was three months. And at that time, the angel had just visited Mary. And the woman, they never discussed about it. There was no telephone, there was no WhatsApp, there was nothing. And she just came after three months to visit. And then was there and... The moment Mary entered, the Holy Ghost came, came upon Elizabeth. And Elizabeth began to speak. That what is happening? That the mother of my Lord has come to visit me. And the babe leaped in my, in my womb. So, you know, it is different. It's not just that. When, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you begin to minister. And the things that you are going to say, they will be edifying. There are things that you know that this is revelation from above. Not that I, I, I've sent somebody there. Okay, there are three witches in your house. And that's what that's really those rubbish, those nonsense. The things that will create fear in the hearts of people. Uh, okay, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost now. I've seen there is attack, an attack in your life. And, and then uh, if, if you wake up at uh, 1 a.m., think that you have no relevance. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you know the Spirit of God, He will bring liberty to the captives. And when the messages that will be coming from you, they will be messages of life. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of life. And if you have been discouraged today, you have been bound today, the, the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. The word of life is coming upon you. You will be free in the name of Jesus. Yeah. This is the house of God. You are in the presence of God. No matter what has followed you into God's house, that is the end of the story. Because we are the spirit of the Lord, is there is liberty, the confusion, the difficulty, the agitation, and all those things, the pain, the depression, they vanish here in the name of Jesus. Because we are in the presence of God. That's what the Holy Ghost does. It gives you revelation. Maybe you have been confused in your life. Your business is not working. Things are now you are in the house of God. The Holy Ghost is saying, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. Today is a day of light in your life. You are going to have light in Jesus' name. Decisions that you wanted to take and you are so confused. What do I do? What, am I, what, 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 what don't I do? How am I going to? Before we end this sermon, <laughs> clarity will come to you. Yeah. You are going to take the decision. It will be a good decision. It will be a prosperous decision. And you are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Yeah. And the steps that you are going to take, they will be ordered by the Lord. Because God will make you good in his sight in Jesus' name. So this woman had revelation. And not only that, after she did that, then, six months after, the baby was born. 
The husband had been put on some sabbatical leave for this time because he did not believe for nine months. But the moment that the Holy Ghost began to work, something happened in his own life also. So it's not only the wife, it's the husband. The Pentecostal experience that we are receiving now, they had a foretaste of that. And when the, the, the baby was born, John the Baptist was born, uh, they brought the, 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 the baby and they said, what's the name? They said, Zachariah. The, the woman said, no, that's not, the, that's not what God has called him. Don't let anybody call you what God has not called you. If somebody is calling you what God has not called you, what do you say? No. That's not what God is calling me. They call you forsaken. Is that your name? They call you stupid. Is that your name? Is they, they call you uh, barren. Is that your name? Is they call you the sickler. Is that your name? You are not going to answer them and to say, yes, uh, these are the elders of our people. This is what they are writing. No. And, and when they, they say, okay, you are a woman. Uh, let's ask the husband. Sometimes they don't understand that what God has joined together, let not man, uh, let not man, man put asunder. And then they say, okay, man. And since they couldn't talk to them, well, they could talk to him, he would hear, but he couldn't respond. They gave him, a, a, he asked for a writing pad, the iPad of their own time. Uh, and then, uh, what is the name? He says, his name is John. Ah. That's what the mother said. And at that point, his tongue was loosed. Hallelujah. Amen. And what did he say? Blessed be the God of Israel who has visited and redeemed his people. And, and then he said that Jesus was coming. Remember that the, the, the wife already said so right from the beginning. And now he's saying, you are going, you are going to be the prophet of the Most High to prepare the way. And he's going to say that we may serve the Lord without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. When the Holy Ghost comes, you begin to minister like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. You engage in body ministry. The Bible says we do things that edify. Your tongue will edify people. It will lift people up. When you come in the church, when you teach the scriptures, people will be lifted up. When you are singing, people will be lifted up. You know, sometimes people come to church dejected, depressed. When you begin to sing by the Spirit of God, they just start at an attention. Even before the pastor is going to preach. Do you remember when they, you know, Elisha, and they said, this place, oh no, this place is barren, the water is so I said, bring me a minstrel. And the minstrel, the singer, she came. It wasn't just a singer of sensual songs. A spiritual song. The moment that woman began to sing, what happened to Elisha? The Holy Ghost came upon him. I said, okay, thus said the Lord. This, 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 and that was it. Do you remember also that even Saul, king of Israel, he had difficulty, demonic problem. Say, ah, we know the, there is a man that, had, that, that has the Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit. And then they brought David to him. He played, he played, he played. What happened to Saul? He was refreshed. Your ministry will be refreshing to other people. People who are confused, people who are discouraged. When you begin to talk, in fact, the Bible talks about Jesus Christ. It says, there were gracious words proceeding out of his mouth. That's what will be happening to you in your life in Jesus' name. You fulfill the mission that God has given unto you. Let's look at our text again, chapter 5 and verse 20. And remember... That is one part of the service that we have to, to, uh, towards the Lord. In verse 20, giving thanks. Amen. Are we there? Ephesians 5.20. Want to go? Let's read it together. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey. He said giving thanks for uh, how frequently? Always. For some things. For what? For all things. Do you remember in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you? You know, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you begin to, your life becomes a life of thanksgiving, a life of gratitude. He teaches you to be thankful, not judgmental, not critical, not temperamental. I don't know why my life is like this. Everybody is succeeding, I'm not succeeding. I don't just know. God is blessing other people. I don't know. God has his favorites. Even in our church, they have the favorites of the people that they serve, the people that they love. And all the time, they are just complaining. 
They are not filled with the Holy Ghost. If you are really filled with the Holy Ghost, your life becomes a life of gratitude, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in whose name? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That will become your life. You, you, you become a greater blessing to the, to the body of Christ. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse, uh, verse 15 that our, the fruit of our lips is what? Is praise. We give thanks. Let's open to that place. Hebrews chapter 13. Let's open quickly. Verse 15. We are going to read together. Are we together, my brethren, today? Yes. If you are there, say amen. amen. One, two, go. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Amen. We give thanks. So whose name? To the name of Jesus. And the Lord is going to bless us completely, continually in Jesus' name. Number three, submissive by the Spirit. We go back to our text I want to read something. You know, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, remember, it's a long sentence, right from verse 18. It says, that verse 18, when you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, something is going to happen in verse 19. You are going to be singing. You are going to be singing spiritual song. In verse 20, you are going to be thanking God. And in verse 21, are we there, my brethren? Want to go submitting yourselves one to another, in the fear of God. Hmm. Submitting yourselves one to another. How? In the fear of God. That is wonderful. You see, the Holy Ghost does not only work through you. He works in you also. Uh, and there are some things that you should, you should treasure. The Bible is saying here, the Holy Spirit will not make you pompous. He will not make you, make you rebellious. He will not make you unruly. He will not make you to be troublesome or irritable in the house of God. You know, that is where sometimes it's good that we are taught. Because the Holy Spirit teaches us. As we sit down and we are hearing the word of God, the Holy Ghost is teaching us. There are some people, maybe some of the scriptures is going on and there is a teacher there and somebody rises up. And then there is a teacher that has been appointed. And this one says, well... Uh, teacher, you know what you are saying? That's not really uh, wow, how the, 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 the context, uh, and then he begins to teach the teacher. And that person is demonstrating that he or she knows the Bible. That's not the Holy Spirit. That is pride. Uh, Pastor, I don't agree with what you are saying because uh, actually, when you look at it from Ephesians, <laughs> okay, who is the pastor now? You, do you understand what you are talking about? Some people, they just feel that maybe because they have read some verses of the Bible, they don't understand that the truth is not only in it is written, but in it is written, and again, it is written. And somebody, we are not just appointing somebody as a pastor because um, we like him. It's to set in order the things that are wanting, and to be able to appoint elders, and to be able to take care of the doctrine in that place. And they will rise up in the church, maybe during summary or Sunday scriptures, and say, Pastor, uh, um, the thing that you've mentioned, I don't really agree with that and all that things. And, and, and then you, you are telling them, oh, oh, what's the meaning of that? Yeah, you know, this is the, we are living in the Western world. I know you have come from Africa where you just take everything and then you, ah, but wait. Ephesus, Asia Minor, Thessalonians. In which continent is Thessalonica? Huh? Europe. What about Philippi? You, you understand? I know your geography is wonderful. But I want to tell you that Christianity did not originate in Africa. There are people here who have been even in the same Europe. Amen. Amen. Oh, and people will say, well, you know, that's Africa. No, 
This by the things we are reading about, you will see the Thessalonica, you will see uh, uh, Asia Minor, I, I mean the churches in Asia Minor, churches here in Macedonia, in Macedonia at least, even if you don't know anything, you will know that Macedonia is in Europe. You understand? So all those places, is just what we have been, it's not so much about where you are coming from, it's talking about how you have been taught by the Holy Spirit. Uh, you're not just going to rise up because you know a few verses of the Bible and then you say, well, our original overseer didn't get it right. Can you imagine that? No, the Holy Ghost doesn't teach us to be pompous. It says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. This is very important. And when we talk about that submission, it starts at home. Let's go to verse 22. Uh, I'm sure we are together today. Amen. Uh, if, 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 if you are there with me, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now we are going to read this one. Verse 22. Huh. Uh, let, let the sisters read this one aloud. One to go. Amen. Amen. <laughs> to somebody who is born again, no big deal. It's only Brad Peter's voice I'm hearing that is loud among, among the people. This is no big deal. It's the word of God. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. That submission starts at home. There is a part also because this thing doesn't end. We, we read the book until verse 33. It talks to the husbands also. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. In fact, the part that is written to the husband is longer than the one of the wife. I don't know why. Maybe men need more words. Generally, women will talk more than men because men need to hear more. I think. Because they don't understand when you tell, talk a little. So the woman has to go over and over and over again. And then the man says, I have heard. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But, but, but this, it starts from home. Our husband, I ask you, are you the kind of man that without Flinching, your wife will be able to say, I just, I just love submitting to him. Have you ever thought about that? One time ago, a man asked the question, My wife <laughs> doesn't want to do joint account with me. And we preach joint account as church. I asked him, can your wife trust you? You know, there are some people, they want their wife to do joint account. But the account is one way. Whatever goes into that account doesn't come back. Everything. You, their own understanding of joint account is that just put your money. Whatever you are earning, just put it in. I take care of the disbursement. Well, it's not like that. You are one. So they start from home. Submitting one to another in the fear of God. And it begins, says, wives, submit to your own husbands. But it goes beyond that. Huh? It says also, ah, let's, let's read it from another part, passage of the Bible. We are together today. Amen. Ah. Colossians chapter 3. From verse 18. You, you begin to see, when the Holy Ghost is at work, Things become different in the house. They become different everywhere. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 18. The Bible says, Wives, submit yourself unto whose husband? Your own husbands. The Bible does not say submit to every husband in the world. No, it's enough to submit to your own husbands. As it is fit in the Lord. Not like a slave, not like, no, no. As it is fit 
in the Lord. When I submit my life to Jesus Christ, it's a joyful submission because I know he loves me. He cares for me. I'm even praying, oh Lord, make my living more and more like thee. Can your wife tell, pray to God, God, make my life more and more like my husband's wife? Think about that. And that was the challenge in many homes. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to their flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as with, in singleness of heart, fearing God. You see, it, it covers the entire home and work. Servants, you know, just like employee. You do your work. The Bible talks in another place about employees that you are not answering again. You know, it's customary nowadays. Maybe the name of your, um, of your uh, boss is uh, Yan. Uh, you say, Yan, that what you are saying is nonsense. I, I don't just agree. I mean, if you like, I, ju I just resign. I can go on out caring or go and do something else. You might be able to do that, but it's not good. Be known as a Christian. Be known as a believer. You're not a slave. You are a servant. You are a, a, an employee. But let your, your boss be able to say, I can trust this one. I can depend upon this one. And that's submission in the, in the place of work. Everywhere, so it covers everywhere. You can, you can be right and still be respectful. You can be principled and still be peaceful. You can be learned and still be lowly. You know, and it also touches in the house of God. So obey them that have the rule over you. They watch for your soul. If you say, well, for me, I can live my life without a minister, without a pastor. There you go. There are some people, they will say, only the overseer can talk to me. You know why? Because the overseer is not with them. It's a lie. Only this pastor, I listen to that pastor, but the one that is close to them, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't. You know the problem is because that person is with them. It's a problem. This person that they are saying that, okay, I will listen to, if that person now begins day by day to minister to them, uh, yeah. <laughs> is there a higher pastor? And when they have that higher pastor, in fact, after, the, after some time, they go, okay, there is no higher pastor. Okay, God. And if God will talk to them after some time, as for the word that you have talking, spoken to us in the name of God, we don't even want to listen. It is the nature. Let God crush that nature. Because when the Holy Spirit is in you, submission becomes a reality. I'm not going to be saying, I do what I like. You can't do what you like if the Holy Spirit is within you. The fact that you want to do what you like, it means that the Holy Spirit is gone. The Spirit of God will abide with you in Jesus' name. So, eh? And as citizens, you are law-abiding. That's what God is talking about. Eh? And then when we are talking about this, how many people among us here are as spiritual as Jesus? or a little bit more spiritual than Jesus. Can you raise your hand? Uh, as spiritual as Jesus, or a little bit more spiritual than Jesus? Uh, none? Jesus Christ told the people, if I, your Lord and your Master, am doing this, why can't you do the same? Let's see what Jesus Christ, what, what, is talk, uh, I mean, what the Bible talks about Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 12. Verses 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 12, verses 18 to 20. If we are there, please say amen. amen. Are we together? Remember where we started from? We are talking about the graceful life of spirit-filled people. Verses 18 to 20. Shall we read together? One to go.
shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice. A bruised reed shall he not make, and a smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment and salvation. Amen. How does that minister to you? Brethren, today we have spoken about important things. Be not drunk with wine. We are in its excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That's where we started from, and that's where we are ending from, and we are ending in. And you have seen what happens in between, what that Holy Spirit does in you. It makes you to minister to the body of Christ, to build up and not to scatter. You become thankful. You are ministering to the body of Christ. And he makes you to be submissive one to another. The elder submitting to the younger and the younger submitting to, I mean, the younger among us to submitting to the elder. Oh, yeah, all of you be subject one to another. Because God receives the proud. And he gives grace to the humble. The Holy Spirit is sweet. And he wants to fill us. So you are going to tell the Lord, Lord, fill me with that sweet spirit of promise. Let's rise up to pray. And when he comes, he does in your life what the Holy Spirit alone can do. Let's spend some time to pray. Let's spend some time to pray. You're going to tell the Lord. You're going to tell the Lord. You started with us. You started with us. You started with us on this Pentecostal highway. And Lord, we want to continue. We want to continue. This is time for prayer. This is time for prayer. And I'm going to say, Lord, I open my heart. I have received your word. I open my heart again. O oh, Lord of glory. O oh, Lord of glory. I want you to fill me. And mold me. I want to be anointed by the Holy Spirit and molded by the Holy Spirit. I want to be occupied by the Spirit and molded and remolded by the Spirit. You are asking the Lord. You are asking the Lord. You are asking the Lord. You are asking the Lord, Lord. The life of the life of the Spirit. The anointing of the Spirit. The fullness of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. The purification of the Spirit, the cleansing of the Holy Ghost, the fire that burns, burns away every sin that is contrary, every sin that is, that is, that is unrighteous, everything that is, that is of the world. Oh Lord, I'm to fill me completely, continually. A life of purity, a life of glory. <laughs> Sweet Holy Spirit, come upon me. All the rough edges in my life. Oh, thou Spirit divine. All my nature refined. Till the beauty of Jesus Christ is seen in me. Oh, we are going to pray this afternoon. We are going to tell the Lord, Lord, I just, I just want to be different. I just want to be different. Oh Lord, I want to be different. Oh Lord, I want to be different. Oh Lord, I want to be different. I want a change of life, a change of character, a remolding, remolding by the Spirit of God, remolding by the power of God, remolding by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, I want you to walk within me. I want you to walk within me. A life of humility, a life of humble service. I want to serve the body of Christ. I'm yielding myself that I will be possessed completely by the Spirit of God. Totally, 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 totally. I don't want to be drunk with anything. I don't want any excess in my life. I want to be filled with that Spirit until I serve with humbleness of life. Everything I do, Lord, with the power of the Spirit of God. Oh, my brother, my sister, except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it will abide alone. Let the flesh die. Let the spirit come. Let the anointing come. Let the glory of God come. 
Let the fullness of God come. Let the Spirit of God come. Let the glory of God come. I want to be fruitful, O Lord. I want to be fruitful. I want to be a fruitful part of the vine in the name of Jesus. I want to be a fruitful branch. I want to be a fruitful branch. The fruit of my life will be edible. The fruit of my lips. Giving praise unto God. Oh, begin to tell the, tell the Lord, Lord, do this in my life. Do this in my life. Do this in my life. Drink of the water of life. Drink. Drink. My brother, my sister, open, open your heart. Let the Holy Ghost fill your heart. Let your power of God fill you so that he will change you. He will change you. You become malleable. You become pliable in the hand of God. You become, you become, you become soft. You become tender in the hand of the Most High God. No stubbornness, no criti critical uh, attitude, no judgmental attitude, no pride. Oh, Lord, I just want what only the Holy Ghost can do. Oh, Lord, do it within me. Do it within me. Do it within me. Yes, we are praying. Yes, we are praying. Yes, we are praying. It's the Spirit of God that can do it. It's the Spirit of life that can do it. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost alone that can do it. Ask the Lord to do it in your life. Ask the power of God to do it in your life. Oh, Lord, touch me. Oh, Lord, touch me. Oh, Lord, touch me. Touch me by your power. Touch me by your grace. Day by day. 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 Oh, Lord, I want to be taking steps, 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 submitting myself unto God. Being filled daily. Building up myself. Upon my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, oh Lord, grant me the grace. Day by day, that prayer will become my nature. It will not become so difficult for me. Staying in your presence will become my, 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 my delight. Oh Lord, let it be in the name of Jesus. Remember, with God, all things are possible. And all these things God has been teaching us right from July. Ah, that they will not just end here. They will continue, they will continue, they will continue, they will continue, they will continue. Oh Lord, let it continue within me. Let your power continue in my life. Let your grace continue in my life. Let your glory continue in my life. Let your anointing continue in my life. Oh Lord, I will live, I will live, I will live. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, all things are possible unto you. Lord, we pray that you will open the floodgates again and pour your spirit upon us and this church will become a more beautiful church in Jesus name a place where we serve one another a place where we are united together where we are flowing together an army that the devil cannot overcome oh Lord make us such an army in Jesus name a force of Bible believing, Bible living, Bible loving, Bible following Christians. Lord, that we will not go into error, but we will, we will abide in the truth. And Lord, we pray particularly this message that we have been listening to from July will affect our homes, will affect our congregations, that will be a peculiar and different people. Let it be in the name of Jesus. As many as have come before you today with one problem or the other, Lord, I pray as they lift up their hands unto you, look down upon them and solve in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray everyone will go home rejoicing. Amen. The beauty of the Lord will be in our lives. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, we will wait uh, before our uh, coordinator dismisses the service. And I uh, want to thank brethren, particularly from Poland and uh, from Denmark, who are connected with us. The Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen.